Hello everyone. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about how I got the uh, gauges working in my E38 LSX swap. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the stuff you won't have to touch. Uh, first off, the fuel level. It's come direct. It comes directly from the tank. There's no reason for you to mess with that system. Um, vehicle speed, that comes from your diff. Uh, there's a sensor in the diff and that's how it knows. Um, I think maybe on some later later models, uh, they switched to some kind of possible CAN bus operation um, and took that information from the uh, ABS system using a wheel sensor. Um, I'm not 100% on that, but I know mine works either way and I didn't have to mess with it. Uh, oil pressure, that uh, switch is in your, uh, that's in the oil filter housing. So um, I retain my filter housing. I plumb the uh, oil lines from my aftermarket pan into the housing and uh, yes there was some welding involved and some making of some fittings and things but uh once i did that worked great uh this is what i was not able to get working in the ik um the i still get the engine fail safe prog when i uh turn the car off um I contacted a few companies over the internet. No one was anywhere brave enough to try and go in and change the programming for the cluster. Um, and so that message is there. Uh, fortunately, it will not cause you to go into limp home mode where it allows you to only stay in the first gear um, and limits power and all that stuff. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, in PA soft, I did go into the settings and switch it over to a manual transmission for the gauge cluster. And, uh, it had no effect, so I'm kind of at a loss on that one. Um, I still get the little yellow light in the dead center. It's like a little A and a arrow around it. Uh, that stays on all the time. Um, eventually just going to crack open the cluster and desolder that bulb and throw it away or something so that uh, that light stays off. I don't need it. Uh, of course, you don't get the miles per gallon indicator. Uh, it would be kind of cool to maybe make it like a you know, to wire it into the tax signal and get like a smiles per gallon indicator. So when you rev it, it's really fast and cool and sounds good, but um, that's something you could try. Uh, the external temperature, yeah, it's always at negative 40. Um, I don't know where this sensor's at. I'm still trying to figure that part out, um, but it's not affecting the way anything runs. But those are the four things you will still have after this uh, if you use my directions. Uh, moving along, so this is the PASoft 1.4 package. Uh, I got mine on Amazon. I think it was like 20 bucks. Um, you, I just use my laptop and this uh, package, and I can get right in and modify the uh, make change all the settings in the IKE. Um, one thing I found is that if whether you get the uh, little OBD2 connector like this, or you even try to plug it into the Roundel connector that's under the hood. Uh, I was never able to get this to communicate with the uh, IKE. Uh, I spent the better part of two months trying to figure this one out until one day on the test bench, I got lucky and it worked. Um, and then I realized what I was supposed to be doing. And what that is, is uh, on the back of your gauge cluster, the IKE, uh, there is a X10113 connector. Um, that is, uh, you're going to want to take pin seven of that guy, which is a white, red, yellow wire. And you're going to run, want to run that to pin seven of your OBD2 port in the car. When you do that, you allow that scanner there to connect to the K bus or the body uh, CAN bus for the car. And at that point, it can locate the uh, IKE and interface with it so you can actually update its settings. Um, the whole idea behind this is, is that BMW produces these cars and myriad of different countries and oftentimes they need their gauge clusters to be able to uh match whatever's you know in that area like in the states they want miles um in europe they uh want kilometers and they need to be able to switch that on the fly which is what this whole thing is and it also allows you to toggle between um digital and analog signals so you can either get your input for the gauge cluster from the can bus like the dme and all that uh, for speed and engine temp and all that, or you can go to the old school analog system and those pins still exist in the IKE. So if you need like a straight signal to come into this thing, uh, into your gauge cluster, um, you know, signal wire for each circuit, you can switch to that, which I thought was just brilliant. Um, so would you go into the low oil pressure? 
uh, it is a switch of, like I said, in the uh, oil filter housing. If you keep the oil filter housing, uh, it's just, uh, there's just really one wire you got to pay attention to. Uh, the earlier ones, so you got to be careful about this when you order them. Uh, the earlier ones were two wire. Well, one wire went to the light, the other wire went to ground. Um, on the, I think, I think in like September of '98, they went to one wire because they realized they didn't need that ground wire uh, when the oil filter housing already grounded. So the switch is just a single wire uh, switch in the uh, housing. Um, and the reason I say switch instead of sensor is because it is literally a switch. When the oil pressure, when you have sufficient oil pressure, that switch breaks and prevents the oil light from grounding. Um, so that's it. Uh, if you do end up wanting to know what wire that is, it is the brown green wire on the filter housing uh, right there on the connector. So, uh, and this is the diagram from the September of 98 and later model here with a single wire. Uh, for your tachometer, uh, you cannot just hook the tack wires up and expect it to read correctly. Um, I think the GM signals just too many. It's too slow for the BMW tachometer. You would rev it and maybe see it hit 2,000 RPMs if you really gunned it. Um, so what I grabbed was a Dakota digital tack signal modifier. Um, you can see SG1AE. Uh, you will have to get put that in between the... Uh, the GM ECU and your tachometer, uh, that'll get you part of the way there. Um, and the other thing you're gonna have to do is uh, you're gonna need to go into the IKE and change the pulse setting for the uh, tachometer as well. Uh, I found by doing those two things and adjusting the Dakota digital unit, I was able to dial it in to be a very accurate representation of the uh, uh, revolutions per minute. So uh, that is, yeah, so I got all the wiring data there. You can, of course, pause the screen if you're at that point. Uh, the coolant temperature, uh, that was pretty straightforward. Um, the sensor is located in uh, the front of the BMW engine. Um, it's up kind of up high on the front near... Uh, I think it's plumbed in. You can, you can see the water pump and you can see where the water pump channels are going. It's in one of those right there. It's got like a tall connector on it and there's four wires coming out of that. Um, that sensor is the same exact thread as the uh, uh, GM one in the LSX. And of course, with your heads being symmetrical, you've got that little Allen plug on the other side, on the uh, passenger side there. You just take that plug out and then screw the sensor in uh, and that's it. Uh, there are four wires on the sensor, two are for the DME, so the BMW computer knows how hot the engine is. Uh, the other two are for gauge operation. Uh, those are the two you want to focus on, and those two wires are the brown purple wire and the brown yellow wire. Uh, they go over to the X20 connector in the E-box, that white connector there, and uh, if you just keep, actually just keep that as is, you know, just take that out of the uh, harness as its own separate wiring then you don't need to cut any wires you can just plug the sensor in uh though i think you will want to shorten the wires because you're going to end up with some excess uh but that's it uh battery light so on the battery light um there are different uh alternators uh for the ls series engines uh some of them had certain voltage regulators and some had others uh one swap i did this didn't work another swap this swap particularly, it did work. Um, you just basically take, uh, you depin pin 15 on the green connector of your GME CU. Um, that's like a charge indicator wire for the computer. And then uh, you take that wire and hook it up to pin one, the blue wire on the X60104 connector uh, that originally plugged to the DME. And in doing so, you will now have the uh, charge light. And that's pretty much it for all the gauges um, start to stop. So I uh, hope this helps somebody. And I'll be putting out more videos for uh, other parts of the swap.